You're not the smartest person in the room. You actually have to work hard and work smart. I always tell young people, invest in yourself. But at the end of the day, where do you want to be? Do you think that our future is in the digital world? I guess only time will tell. Because what used to work two, three years ago, one year ago, won't be uh, relevant in like one and two, that you're going to succeed, that you're going to make it, and you're going to make it big. Makram. Yes. Let's talk about you. Yeah. You are a startup and a startup founder or yeah. startup mentor, and you have your own business. What I know about you is that you are a marketing expert. Uh, you are like uh, advocating for um, online safety, and you are a mentor and uh, our friend at Yep Moldova. Yeah. This is what I know about you and also that you are from Lebanon. Please tell you more mm. information yeah. about you. Marhaba, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. which is hello in Arabic. Uh, marhaba, and it's a pleasure to be here in Moldova, in Kishnau and at Artwork. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm, I have like two hats that I wear that has to do with digital communication and uh, online safety. So throughout my career, I had contributed for like five startups and uh, as for online safety, I'd, I advise uh, social media companies and we work on uh, public policies and online safety issues uh, in the Middle East area. So I have started like uh, after my graduation from law, and uh, this is how the past started and everything ha they say happens for a reason, right? So you would say what brings a lawyer from law to uh, digital communication and when you connect the dots in your life, uh, it leads you, the past would lead you somewhere and when you start figuring out what you want to do, uh, you know that the, the path's gonna take you where your passion is. And actually my passion was for innovation and creativity. And this is how I got to uh, digital communication. And here I am in uh, Moldova, in Kishnau at Artcore. Uh, you see, I believe in giving back to the community and working with the community. And since we are in a innovation hub at Artcore, so mentoring was part of me giving back to that community also. Uh, contributing to the place where you live. So it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. How you said about your path, how you understand what is your path, how you understand what you are good at, and uh, how to choose because uh, we are, maybe we have, uh, we are, have a lot of talents and uh, we have a lot of um, wishes. How you put all this together? It's not easy, you know, I know a lot of people who are really trying, it's not easy. And if you were able to know what you want in life early on, that will make things very easy for you. Basically, I would take it back to trial, to trial and error. I'll take it back to knowing what you really want. And this is something that sparks from failure, from experiment, from uh, experience in life. And this is something that you build on and on and on as you... Uh, uh, walk the life, uh, your life, and this is something that's really interesting in terms of failure, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I know something that uh, nobody would like to talk about because you know we live in a society that is where winning is everything. So, yes, you start you by have to be the best. You exactly, have to be the most exactly, successful. exactly, you and this is a pressuring culture. One. Exactly. So, uh, as I said, we live in this winning is everything, and. Uh, this has an effect on how you deal with failure, right? Because you want to uh, succeed all the time. And even if you fail, your reaction and your uh, commitment to yourself to learn something will be diminishing because all your focus is, I have to win, I have to win, I have to win. Whereas life happens when you take risks, right? So how do you know your path? You, t you take risks. You come out of your comfort zone, but you know, you hear, and this is a cliche, but I would like to say it, like if you're not stretching yourself, you're not growing. And this is how it starts, getting out of that comfort zone and 
as a matter of fact, if you're doing the same thing uh, that you're happy with or okay with, not happy with, that you're okay with and it's okay, then you're not doing much. So you take risks, you fail, you learn, you learn, and then you, you do some sort of uh, uh, analysis on what's going on and you plan, right? And you plan. So it's not one thing that you could tell somebody to do and they will know what they want in life. No, actually everybody uh, has their own path, but they need to learn from their experiences, not have like the expectations that would hinder them. And in addition to focus on what matters to them, you know, and this could start by asking the right questions. We start with the why. Why am I doing this? Why I want to do that? So then we move how and the what. So these are the basics that we can use that would help us figure out on what we want to do in life. So you ask why I want to do this after that? Exactly. Why? The why. And here it's linked to passion, right? On what would you like to do? And why are you doing this? And why you want to do what you are about to do? And what so basically, this, the question starts with, where will I be, right? Why am I doing this? But where will I be in like five, ten years? What do I want to be in But it life? sounds like a cliche. Yes, exactly. But these are the questions, you know, the why, the what, the how, uh, the where, right? When you have the questions for that, then you are on the right path. In addition to your experience, your failures, what you have learned, and accumulating the knowledge along the way. Uh, what are you doing? It's also very important, yes? And how you are doing this. And uh, I want to ask you, how do you think, what are the most important uh, skills that uh, young people, people have to have? Uh, what uh, um, professions maybe they have to think about to, uh, to find for them? Um, this is very important for young people. I didn't have this uh, opportunity to, to have like a mentor in front of me when I was very young and I had to somehow to, to find this path uh, by myself. But now uh, let's try to help these young people. When it comes to skills, let me start by saying living with failure or learning how to learn from failure is a skill. But what I would advise, resilience. Resilience, like, you know, throughout all our lives, maybe nobody will tell us this, but we will face challenges, we will face failures, we will face problems. And life is not la vie en rose, right? Mm -hmm. So basically we need to not be as living for problems. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is life is not going to be as nice as you watch on TV, right? Life is something else and failures are there. And sometimes like research tell us that 50% of startups fail, right? And this is not to scare startups, uh, mm -hmm. to scare startups or entrepreneurs, but this is reality. So a skill is to know how to live with failure, remind yourself of those mistakes that you make, make a list of them to know what you have learned. And this is what, how you learn your lesson. That, let that alone, then you move on to have critical thinking. You know, like you need to have critical thinking what is skills. Critical thinking? So to be able to be able to look at things and ju not judge it or take it by the face value, right? Basically, you have to analyze it to have a, a 360 degrees understanding of that, and also to be able to be curious. So when you have critical thinking, you have curiosity, you know, and you are able to understand and become a problem solver. And that's as, again a skill, right? So basically, yes, critical thinking, problem solving, uh, as I always say, curiosity you know, having the curiosity. But if there's something I would advise them, resilience, flexibility, the ability to adapt. Now we live in an ever-changing world, right? And what do we need? We need to be able to adapt for all the changes that's coming up. You know, I remember when we first started working in marketing and digital communication, the, you know, the lexique, the, uh, what we used to pitch was different. The solutions were different. The internet was different, you know? <laughs> There were no social media. And just imagine we were stuck in that mm -hmm. web 1.0 uh, era. No, we had to move on. You evolve, you learn. And if you don't do that every day, every day decide like you want to learn something new. 
and you go on and do it because uh, the world is moving, change is happening all the time. Where, where do you decide to put yourself in that ecosystem? Are you going to just say, I wish, or are you going to be a doer? Are you going to be a leader and move on by, as I said, critical thinking, curiosity, innovation, and creativity? Uh, trying to look at things from a different perspective. We all have something to bring to the table. We, we just have to bring it on the, to the table, you know? And I always tell young people, invest in yourself if you want to achieve your dreams. But dreams don't happen alone. You can dream as much as you want. That doesn't make lie. them a reality. <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact, you know, failures can be contributed to three stages. Failure of vision, failure of strategy, and failure of plan, right? So failure of strategy when you don't have a plan, and failure of a vision when you have no vision of where you want to be, or what do you want to become, or what your business is going to be. And failure of tactics when you don't know how to do or to implement that vision and that strategy. So basically, if we take it back and to simplify things, uh, have a good ambition, uh, accept failure, learn from it, know that thing, you will have challenges, things are not going to come easy, work hard but work smart, and most of all I would say stay curious. And uh, let me quote Steve Jobs, stay hungry, st stay foolish, right? <laughs> Because you said you were part of uh, for five uh, five startup uh, development, uh, how it was? Why you decided to be part of these teams, and uh, how was uh, the journey? It it was not easy at first, let's say. Uh, but you know, there there had been successes and there had been failures that you learn from, and uh, throughout your journey, you decide to sometimes experiment with what you want to make sure that this is the right direction that you're going through. Anyway, uh, contributing to those startups or the building of that, uh, developing of those startups teaches you a lot because I've seen like one of our first startup failed, right? And you learn a lot and it failed because uh, you see when failure happened, you just don't just run away from it. You know, you just embrace it and understand what happened. And you ask yourself, you learn. exactly. And how do you learn? You ask yourself, what was our uh, goal? What went wrong? What was the impact? And what could we have done better? Right? So instead of me cursing or, you know, uh, just uh, having this fear of failure. And unfortunately, m many entrepreneurs are afraid of failure, you know, and that stops them from innovating, stops them from taking the risk. next step. Exactly, taking risk. And how are you going to do anything or achieve anything without taking that extra uh, step or that taking that extra mile, right? So when you fail, you learn. Because that's the other side of success, right? And if we said we want to define failure, I know we're talking a lot about failure, but this is how you learn, right? So in, in my first startup that uh, I was managing, we basically had a problem with the vision. So basically, we had different visions on how to run the company and what the company was going to be. And it ended up with us exiting and mm -hmm. the rest saying. So the point is, yes, the vision. That's the point. That's one of the things when I said strategy, uh, so it wasn't vision enough plan. big or what? No, actually we had a different vision for the company. Ah, the okay. partners had different <laughs> vision for the company. So everybody was uh, taking a Push different it. Exactly, okay. exactly. Different Plus one of the things that also led to that failure, I think, was the uh, communication part. Because when you have a vision, you have to communicate it, right, across the board. So maybe that as well. Uh, had been also the problem that also led to failure. So what my point is vision, shared vision, communication, communicating with your teams, communicating with your management, with your colleagues, that's very important. Because you see, for any business to succeed, there should be a common vision, just like uh, they teach in military schools, right? Having this, 
one goal that we need to achieve. And same thing, it happens for the businesses. Everybody should be aligned. We all believe in the same uh, vision, in the same target, and we need to go achieve it. I'm so, sorry, yeah. I'll interrupt here and I'll remember, I remember now that um, a lot of years ago I was in Japan and we have visited a lot of companies and everywhere they said that we have an, uh, one vision and we have one message that you can hear from the person that is, is staying at the, um, uh, at the door. So, and uh, uh, the same message will uh, be said uh, by the cell. So it's, uh, you cannot hear different messages, you cannot hear even different uh, words. It's, they are speaking in the, same, uh, uh, in the same way, all of them. And it doesn't matter if it's a very small company or it's a corporation, it's uh, the same. And that's how you achieve, right? Because you have no wasted effort. We are all working for the common goal. And this is basically really important for a startup like, and for the entrepreneurs, like aligning their team. We're all working for the same vision. And here, let me say something that I've learned from that experience, from that failure, I would say, is you need to check your ego at the door. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're when you're when you're a, an entrepreneur, uh, it's too early, especially in the survivor period, survivor period. Uh, you don't have to be a businessman right away. Right. You have to be more of a salesman. So you check your ego outside at the door and go in to lead, not force people to do things, but to influence them, to lead them. Right. And this is something very important. Like, just imagine, you cannot be a CEO in the first survival period of your startup. You have to be heads on, hands on. You should be empowering your team. You should be working with them. Ask how, like, for example, and I read this somewhere, like one of the CEOs. So when he was uh, appointed CEO on a certain level, so he had these perks, right? So he goes up. In the elevator, nobody is allowed to come in. So he stopped communicating with uh, the teams throughout the company, right? And then he found out that he wasn't talking to their teams. And one of the important things we, when we talk to entrepreneurs, ask your teams, how can we make this better? You know, again, back to the why and how and what and where, right? These are the basics that we always advise. And this is one of the things that I've learned. Yes, check your ego outside. Know that you are not uh, the top performer. You're not the smartest person in the room, you know, at least not in everything. I'm no, not. And here I should say, do not mistake an ego for confidence. No, you should be confidence, confident that you're going to succeed, that you're going to make it and you're going to make it big. But ego is something else. But don't and forget about humility. Yes, exactly. Of course, of course. And here a good leader is a team player. Right. And that's what employees want. That's how you create loyalty. And this is something that I've learned from that experience, from that failure that yes, you need to lead, not force people to do things because loyalty is something really important. And I was talking about, I, I should go back to the vision part that we mentioned. I was talking about flexibility again, that it's not like you put one vision and that's it because everything is changing around you. Technology, depending on what field you are working in, but everything is changing. Even your clients are changing. So you cannot stick to one thing and say, that's it. As I said, things keep evolving. And about uh, the changing uh, and everything changes, uh, we are in the COVID situation now. Hopefully, maybe soon we will, it will end. But uh, during two years, I think we had one of the <clears throat> biggest uh, progress in a lot of different sectors. Uh, what about uh, marketing and digital marketing? I know that trends are changing every week, I think. I know that you are on one of the best specialists uh, that we have here. So I want to hear from you. What do you think about trends and how an entrepreneur have, has to adapt? Because it's not easy. You have a vision, you have a strategy, you have some plans. And uh, if the trends are changing, the customer wants to have something different now. How 
are you doing this uh, with this how you face these yeah. challenges let me just say uh, let me mention something because i don't want startups and entrepreneurs uh, listening to us today to feel like this is a pressure the marketing is a huge pressure on them because you know according to statistics the number one cause of failure for startups is no market need <laughs> no market need and marketing actually comes down at like seventh or eighth yes. what is marketing need because uh, i want to say this before we move on so in every business in every startup there's the front end and the back end the front end that is customers and the back end that is the systems the people the support so uh, most entrepreneurs end up investing a lot in the back end and leaving the front end and basically i was saying el earlier they should be salesmen right so focus on the customer and now i'm going to link it to marketing now it's about being client obsessed customer obsessed you know because what what is marketing at the end of the day right it's a, it's about solving the problem for for those people it's about putting your product and services in front of those clients right where and when and in addition to the usual things that we say the uh, promotion the pricing etc so basically marketing is changing because the tools are changing the world is changing you mentioned covid and i would say technology is changing and now one of the most buzzwords for the past few months was the metaverse right so we see a lot of changes there and we have seen how the b to b and b to c uh, marketing solutions are like getting closer and mixing with each other and this is something the the line is disappearing why because the metaverse is creating a new opportunities for marketing and this is it, now it's still a concept right but eventually we if we're heading that way just imagine that this shared uh, virtual reality will allow consumers to dictate what they want from their brands so it's no longer actually about the products and i would give you an example think how nfts and clothes like people in the metaverse would like to make their own clothes and how is that going to affect branding for uh, in the retail fashion right and the need for them to reinvent their marketing solutions because what used to work 2 3 years ago 1 year ago won't be uh, relevant in like 1 and 2 again this is the same lesson that we have learned over the time change happens all the time it's you how have to be are flexible. you exactly have to be flexible and how you will get the tools and the know and the knowledge on how you're going to be competitive in a really, really, really advanced uh, market. You know, uh, Akram, when I uh, used to work in a um, uh, state organization uh, for SME development, we were talking about the uh, SMEs, that they are small and they are very flexible. Uh, in uh, a, an ideal world, it's like this. In uh, Moldova, it's not all the time because you have some processes, you have some credits, you have some clients that you have to um you have to work with but uh, uh, how do you see how in general startups and uh, small companies have to be prepared for this change how they understand that these are the trends uh, because you have to combine somehow your acti now activities the present activity and how you'll do it in the future yeah how they do as i as i mentioned the front end right because it's all linked to the customers and when i mentioned the number one cause of failure is no market need what does require and how can you overcome these all of this market research you should do research market research uh, clients you need to understand your clients create personas uh, and this is something that would help you understand what's coming on and most importantly to stay at up to date with the latest advancement in the field that you are in you're working you cannot settle for for what you used to know where is Bur uh, blackberry now where is nokia now versus uh, iPhone, apple right yes. uh, the apple iphone from apple right so basically you need to always try to as i said invest in yourself and in your company in curiosity. you cannot settle you know you cannot settle you know they say one person doesn't make mistake in life 
the one who does nothing. Yes. And you cannot <laughs> afford, if you're in the business, you can't afford to be that. Because if you're in your heyday today, where are you going to be tomorrow? Right. So that's why you need to keep investing in research, gaining knowledge, hiring the right people, you know, and uh, aligning all the different ecosystems in your uh, business model. And that's something that is really essential. That's really essential. You can solve it, as I said, by research and understanding the market, what your clients needs, working on, uh, as I said, taking risks and exploring new opportunities and sometimes that would requires going out of your Building. comfort zone and your market <laughs> your local market <laughs> you know and like really like you cannot just expect things to come to you that maybe happens in movies but in real life you have to work for them and you actually have to work hard and work smart and this is how you achieve about working smart if uh, you talk with uh, entrepreneurs <laughs> let's talk about moldova uh, you will hear that uh, young people are lazy, they don't want to work, they, don't, uh, they are not very educated. I can see that um, on the other side, young people don't want to work in these small companies. I know why this happens. Tell me, please, how do you think? Why young people that are now educated in another way? They are uh, their generation different people. Why they are not interested in working in classical small companies? And how do you think what they have to do, these entrepreneurs, to solve this problem? Because in five years, I think this will be a huge problem. They are not going to have people that will work for them. Yeah. As we said, we, we live in the winning is everything community, right? And everybody, or maybe, most people would like to wait for that one big thing, one big break, one, you know, and reality is you have to start from somewhere, you know, like you have to start some from somewhere and starting from somewhere means starting small sometimes. It doesn't mean like when you get a degree, you're going to be hired as a CEO, right? You have to start from because, you know, back in the days, uh, going up in an organization meant you have to start from the bottom. You have to work in sales to understand your product, which basically means you, ha you really need to start somewhere. And if you are a fresh graduate or even if, you, if you're like uh, trying to make a business, you have to start somewhere. And how do you grow your network? You start from a company, even if a small company. You have to gain knowledge. You have to gain experience. How do you do that? You have to start somewhere. Where is that? Sometimes it is a startup. And let me say something. Startups are the backbone of any economy. So if we do not invest our time in that ecosystem, if I don't start somewhere, where would I lead? Where, what would I become? Wait, what if that one big thing didn't happen? So I wasted my time. And you know, the number one commodity in life, the most expensive one, is time. And we cannot afford to lose it. So versus gaining knowledge, gaining experience, failing, learning from my failures, building a network, building my knowledge, understanding the market, I decide to do nothing. No, I prefer to start somewhere. And of course, I advise them to, you see, it's a mindset and it's a culture. But at the end of the day, where do you want to be? Where, what do you want to achieve? Again, to the why why are we doing this? Why, why do I want to become an entrepreneur? What's my passion? You know, and I would like to say something. You know, a cave with 1,000 years of darkness can be lightened by one candle in one second, right? So that's, that's your one step. That's your first step that you need to take. And I think we owe it to ourselves and young people owe it to themselves and to their communities to take this extra step for a better future. What about the future? Uh, do you think that our future in the, is in the digital world? In the online? <laughs> you know, is our uh, future in the metaverse? I guess only time will tell. <laughs> we were talking about the song. So I would just say, you know, uh, definitely the world is changing. And I think we are now on, on a on a transition, in a transition period where AI is going to kick in, uh, machine learning, uh, VR, you know, the metaverse as well. 
like you feel technology is taking one step ahead and actually it's a leap for what's coming and the way we see new companies or big tech how they are innovating now of what's from drones for uh, from uh, shared virtual uh, worlds all this is telling us yes technology is basically gonna be a big uh, aspect of our future basically providing us with more tools building more environments where humans supposedly uh, gonna be achieving their full potential but the th question is gonna be where are we gonna be in that environment are because what you see this we had learned throughout history throughout what did history teach us whenever whenever technology changes human habitats will change our lives will change i'm talking about since uh, agriculture started since uh, humans started uh, hunting for food right this, this whenever we had new tools whenever we had new technologies our lives changed the industrial revolution the internet and think we had web 1.0 what happened with web 2.0 social media big techs and now we're heading to web 3 so technology yes it's going to be and more and more uh, we will be more immersed in technology and it will be part of our day-to-day -day life and actually uh, it will build the environments in which we're going to be living in. And who knows where, where our imagination and creativity will go. And just think, you were mentioning young children and young uh, people. They are responsible on, of building that technology for our future, right? And making our world a better place. I think that our children now are like people that uh, test all this technology by themselves oh. because they are there they are in these games they are in this world uh, and uh, somehow they learn by doing and in a couple of years for sure they will change somehow because they have they are more fast than uh, we are tell me please uh, can you consider yourself as a digital nomad well actually <laughs> one of the challenges that we were that i was able to overcome was changing the business model mm -hmm. and that's happened like before the pandemic and around like six years seven years ago where I was able to change to transfer transform the business model into a digital one so uh, I changed the business model of the company in a way that I can operate but it from how it anywhere was, how it was before basically it was brick uh, brick and mortar so we had no uh, pay an office we had overheads and etc so now it's all project based it is digital run digitally the team and communication and thanks to technology uh, that's now is as easy as can be especially after the pandemic and all the tools that we have at our disposal and this is something really empowering just imagine being able to enjoy different countries and different cities around the world and your office is basically your uh, your computer no, on the laptop. Island uh, in the middle of uh, somewhere in the ocean. Exa <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Before coming to Kishnau, uh, we were in Zanzibar, and as you said, it's it's an island in the Indian Ocean. And just imagine being able to enjoy these different cultures and enjoying uh, learning about people something new every single day and interacting with them while still being able to run your business uh, in your off home office or in your computer or at Artcore in mm -hmm. Moldova. And if someone is uh, looking at us uh, not that are not in Moldova, uh, would you recommend them to be a digital, Moldo uh, digital nomad in Artcore in, or in general in other hub in Moldova? And why? Well, I would definitely advise them something <laughs> I'm already doing, right? So yes, of course. Well, I, would, I should say like, the experience so far has been really, really positive. People are extremely nice. And, you know, at Artcore, uh, the infrastructure allows us to uh, deliver what's important for us. Like, I'm talking about connectivity, I'm talking about the space, about the environment, the community. And this is something uh, speaks a lot. Like, look 
where I am here. We are here talking to uh, young people from uh, and entrepreneurs from Moldova, and on to see and mentoring uh, before through the YEP uh, program. And this is an opportunity for me. And Artcore had given me this opportunity to give back to the community where we live. And this is something uh, I'm thankful for. So we are inviting all the people in Moldova at yeah. least for one week to see what uh, we have here and uh, also it's very important because you have you bring your own experiences as, uh, as digital nomad and uh, this is so important for us to learn from you uh, to learn from your mistakes uh, from your failures but also from your success and thank you thank you Akram for being with us and uh, hope that we will have uh, a lot of more projects and uh, uh, initiative uh, to, to build together. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, if there is one thing I would say to everybody like about uh, our experience in life, experiences in life is that failure is not a s step back. It's actually a step in a long journey to success. And I would like co to quote uh, Samuel Beckett on when he said, uh, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. All the best and thank you. Thank you.